Hi, this is Coach Rich Rogers, and welcome to the Blue Wave Podcast. Today we're talking about the exit requirements for level two of the level system. I remember all the criteria should be met, so you're ready to go to the next level, okay? So we talked about uh, the level one in a previous podcast. We've also talked about the stroke card and another one that preceded that. So if you're not familiar with those, please see that before watching this one. So again, we're looking at the physiological, psychological, tactical, technical, and performance areas to go to the next level, okay? From a physiological standpoint, the athlete should be able to swim freestyle continuously for about 30 minutes without breaking form. So that way we know that they're physiologically ready for the demands of the next level. They can successfully compete the training sets for group advancement. And on this page here, this is again under training groups and it has it all spelled out. So if I go up here to training groups, I go to age group level two, that's where we are. Scroll down to the bottom and to move into the level three of the level system, the swimmer should be able to do 16100s freestyle on 145. You want to go to at least five seconds rest, five 200 IMs on 345, and one of the following sets. 12100s of the stroke on freestyle and butterfly or backstroke. It's on 150 and breaststroke two minutes. Okay, so those are the sets that need to be completed to move on to age group level three. At this stage, they should also be able to explain the basics of the energy zone system that we use as well and try to hold their pace and then also check their heart rate while they're training. They should have successfully attempted to complete 100 yards or meter in every stroke as well as a 200 IM, 200 freestyle in a sanctioned competition. That can be AAU or USA Swimming. From a psychological standpoint, we're looking at a tre- achievement drive and self-awareness at this stage. Okay, that's crucial to moving on up, is knowing who you are and, and what you want to accomplish. So what we have down here is demonstrates a compelling desire to overcome obstacles to accomplish something worthwhile. Okay, so they're not just giving up when there's a roadblock. They understand that they have to work around different issues and find ways to do that. They understand why setting goals are important and begins to set practice and performance objectives. Now that can be, I want to make sure that I'm holding 138 on these hundreds as prescribed, could also say, hey, I'm looking for that double B time to see if I can make the Junior Olympics for the summer. But those goals are are starting to be set at this stage. The swimmer would also display a willingness to make changes and work hard to meet those stated goals. Okay, so they're taking ownership at this stage. They understand and accept individual differences in physical size within an age group, which is really crucial because you're going to have some boys that are going to be almost six feet tall at some stage, or they're going to have muscle, or they hit puberty earlier, or whatever. Same thing with the, with the ladies. So, you know, it's not always how you are at 11, 12, 13, 14, that's going to determine how you are at 18, 19, 20, and up. Uh, personal example, I mean, I was very skinny, and not too strong at a younger age, and I didn't get faster until I was a little bit older. So, hang in there and understand that your time will come. <clears throat> They also at this stage can understand the difference and demonstrate the difference between tense and relaxed muscles and can identify past situations where both have been present. So they're starting to get some sort of awareness of, of their body and getting listening to that feedback that the body gives them. They can describe the prescribed perceived exertion targets for each one of the five energy zones. Okay, so we have zone one, which is broken down into 1B and 1A. Zone two, which is by itself, and then three, four, and five also have an A and a B. And in a previous podcast, I believe I went over how that all works. But perceived exertion levels, so like on 1B, it's long and strong. 1A is hard but makeable. Zone two is uncomfortable. Zone three is as fast as you can hold, which is basically the back end of your your 200. And then zones four and five are always as fast as you can go. So they should be able to have that that rate of perceived exertion and understand where they are in each one of those. They would also know why effective energy zone training helps their performance. And they also know how how and why we monitor heart rates. So those are the psychological um, objectives to go from level two to level three. From a tactical standpoint, the swimmer should have demonstrated an understanding that different races require different race strategies. You're not going to go all out on the first 25 of a 500 and then hang on. You're not going to go too smooth on the first 25 of a 50. So they're starting to see that there's strategies involved in how they're doing each one of their races. 
They have utilized their underwater portion of their race with success for all four strokes in a sanctioned competition. So they're not rushing their pullout on the breaststroke. They're understanding that they're trying to go that 15 meters, or at least they're doing the deeper, tighter, stronger, faster off of each wall. They also consistently finish their races up-tempo and with a strong kick. Too many times, even at a senior level, the swimmers will come to the wall and they might slow down a little bit or drop their legs. So if we can teach them at an early stage that they're always finishing up-tempo and they're always kicking hard into that finish, that's going to serve them really well as they get higher in the sport. From a technical aspect, they should score at least one on all the skills required for advancement in these, each stroke on the swimmer's scorecard. They start from a block. They execute a legal turn for all four strokes. They can swim a 200 IM with legal technique, turns, and transitions. They can execute those transitions effectively in practice and at the meets. They can also execute an effective and legal relay start. Relays are important, especially as they get a little bit older. It's great for team spirit, but it's also good for scoring points on a national level. They work on their underwater aspects for each stroke during workouts. And that's important because so many times people hear me say, the underwater portion is the most important. And then they go to a meet at the end of the season and they're like, hey, I got to stay underwater. But if you didn't practice it all season long, you're only going to hurt yourself. So it's important that they work on their underwater aspect of their stroke during workouts, especially at the end of sets when they're tired. All right, so you can see now how level one and level two are coming together. So we can give a good basis for the aspiring swimmer to have the skills that they need to be efficient. Our next podcast will be level three. Thank you. Again, this is Coach Rich Rogers, Blue Wave. Be safe.